for this um, summative assessment, we're basically going to do three different runs with this model, and each one will have a different history of the emissions control rate. So when you open the model up, um, just reset everything first. Hit the reset button. Clears everything and returns it to the original. And then we're going to run it with the default values. So for the practice version, we're going to use the default values. We're not going to change anything. We're just going to run it. So we run it and we see what happens. Here you can see in red the temperature rising and it gets up to about 6.8 degrees Celsius warming. In blue is the carbon emissions that rises and it reaches a peak of about 31 gigatons of carbon. And then it starts to decrease and then it just sort of falls off a cliff right here. It falls off a cliff right there because we actually run out of fossil fuels at that point. And if you click ahead a few graphs, you can see um, there's the emissions there. Sorry, go back one. This graph shows the fossil fuels remaining. That drops to zero at this point. So we totally run out of fossil fuels at that point. So that's uh, scenario number one. That's the do nothing scenario. Then the, the next scenario B is called the slow and steady one. And if you look over here in this table, there are some numbers that tell us the values of this emissions control rate at different points in time. So here's what you do. You click on the emissions control rate here. You click on table. And then these uh, Y values here are the numbers that are reflected over here. So 0 0.005 is already there. That's set. Now we're going to put in 0.15 and then 0.3, and then 0.45, and then finally 0.6. And hit OK. And now we see we have a nice, slow, steady increase in the emissions control rate. That means as time goes on, we're going to kind of slowly do more and more in terms of reducing carbon emissions. So that's all we have to change. And then we run the model, and you see that that results in a, in a uh, somewhat lower uh, global temperature change, still rises to 5.45 degrees C, which is a pretty serious warming by the year 2200. Now we'll, we'll do one more scenario. This is the get serious scenario. And the values here, uh, according to that table, are 0 0.33, 0 0.66, and then one. And one. Now, when this has a value of one, that effectively means we're going all out. We're going to do whatever it takes to eliminate um, all carbon emissions. <clears throat> and so we set that up, and you can see here it, it tops out and stays at one there at the end. So we run that scenario, and sure enough, the temperature changes quite a bit less. We have 2.8 degrees of, of temperature change by the end of time. And you know, if you look at the carbon emissions, let's see if we go to this one here, this is all three runs of carbon emissions. So the third one we get serious, the carbon emissions, they actually drop to zero by the time we get to the year 2152 and they stay at zero at that point. <clears throat> So then you've done these three runs on a number of these graphs. The, the, the different curves represent run one, run two, run three. So run one would be the do nothing scenario. Run two would be the slow and steady scenario. scenario, And run three would be the get serious scenario. And so um, there are a whole bunch of different graphs here. Everything is plotted. Um, here, by the way, these are the total abatement costs. And you can see in the first run, the abatement costs are essentially zero all the way along. And then the abatement costs get very big once we run out of fossil fuels. We have to make up for that with renewable energy. And so that's going to be um, associated with some significant costs. So the abatement costs rise up dramatically there and then level off <clears throat> as time goes on. So then in this worksheet, you see there are a whole bunch of um, 
questions to answer. What is the global temperature change at the year 2200 for a scenario A, B, and C? And these are the answers that you could get off of these graphs. Graph number two, graph number 15, 17, 18, 7, 9, and so on. From just doing these three scenarios and then toggling back and forth between these graphs, running your cursor along here until you get to the year 2200, and then recording the values and filling them, in, filling them in in this table. So if you fill in this part of the table with those values, then you can use these numbers to help you answer the various questions that uh, go along with, with this experiment. So hopefully that 